Imagine having the services of one of the greatest game designers of all time. He's been brought on board to make what he was always destined to make. The sequel to one of the greatest games of all time, Bloodlines 1. He directed it, Brian Mitsoda. He's brought on to make this sequel. He's given a team to work with. They're all ready to get behind him and produce this masterful works that's potentially going to change gaming. But what happens? Paradox, the publisher, they've got no leadership. They pair Brian Mitsoda up with idiots and they completely drop the ball. The game goes nowhere, there's office politics. It essentially gets cancelled. Brian is fired. The game's in limbo. And now it's with a new developer who seemingly has never made an RPG before. This is the story of Bloodlines 2. And now we're going to talk about where it's all going from here. I honestly thought that this game hit rock bottom years ago. But Paradox still have a trick or two up their sleeve. They've got a few more surprises in store. As we know, Hard Soup Labs, they were fired as developers two years ago. The game was shifted to the Chinese room, they're called, the new studio. And they've been tasked with following up the classic. The game's due to release next year, fall 2024. And the real issue for me is that there's essentially been three years of development time, which is really not long at all in the 2020s. Years ago, if we go back to the 90s, early 2000s, three years was plenty. But it seems now that for a game to actually be complete, it, it takes half a decade, five, six years. We've seen it with Starfield. We've seen it with Baldur's Gate 3. And you could even argue that those games weren't really finished either. I mean, Starfield, you can't even read a book. As far as I know, you've got to pick it up and then read it. That just seems like a bit of a, a lapse. That wouldn't have been the case if the game really had that time in the oven. Baldur's Gate 3, a higher quality experience than Starfield overall. But the last act isn't quite finished. So it, it seems like not even half a decade, five, six, seven, eight years in Starfield's case... It doesn't always get you the way there. So how is Bloodlines 2, a game that's already been in turmoil? It was literally shelved by the publisher, wasting years and years of money, resources, the public's goodwill, given they fired the original creator, which basically destroyed the confidence that, that anyone in the general public had in it. And they, they've started again, but it seems like... They haven't taken a step back and thought, all right, we made a mistake the first time. We got an inexperienced dev. They'd never developed a role-playing game before. I'm going off memory here. I think they might have developed some shooters, and that's about it. They put this big team together to create a really ambitious title. They couldn't deliver. And despite all this, Paradox are seemingly just making the same mistake again. They've given this series to a developer who's got no RPG experience. It's a developer that's made some okay games. They've made Dear Esther, I think. They've made the Amnesia game with pigs in it. I played it, it was okay. Some other adventure games, or, or if we're being fair, they were walking simulators. Not a lot of gameplay. This is the studio that's going to make a game with all of the gameplay, where you've got all of the choice. You build your character. There's a great story, a great setting. It's very different to most role-playing games out there. It's It's got to be that unique. And they're the ones who are putting it together. It seems odd to me that Paradox would have decided that this is the studio that is the best choice to put this title together, to restore faith for fans, to bring this IP back to where it needs to be. But if you dig a bit deeper, you find the answer, because there are rumours, I can't say that they're confirmed rumours, but they've been doing the rounds on Bloodlines, Vampire the Masquerade related discussion boards. And it seems like at some point, after Hard Suit Labs were fired, that the publisher of the Chinese Room, the developer working on this game, the publisher Sumo Digital, they pitched the sequel to Paradox and said that they could do it on the cheap. They could make a, a, a nice cheap sequel. It wasn't going to cost a lot of money. Paradox, who've already wasted all of their cash, they could essentially cut their losses and get a cheap title out there. 
What's the reason for doing so? Well, Paradox took pre-orders for years for Bloodlines 2, despite there barely being a game in existence. There certainly wasn't a playable game, at least not one that was, was not a total disaster. And Paradox was selling not just this game for pre-order, but also all these deluxe editions where they promised expansion 1, expansion 2, 100 plus dollars. They put that out there and, and everyone was hyped. This is probably, given that it's been so long since the game was first announced, what's it been, six years or something like that? It, it's been so long that back then, people weren't so wary. No one likes the pre-orders and all of these deluxe editions, whatever, but people hadn't been as let down as they are now, where I think people are less likely to hand over their money purely for nostalgia. Although, if we are being fair, everyone did that for Diablo 4, which is a very recent example. So maybe gamers haven't learned, but you would hope for next time, if there's a Bloodlines 3, one day in the future, people won't be so gullible. They'll, they'll wait. They'll at least get some real gameplay, not a cinematic trailer where they bring back old characters, pretend it's, it's all going to be like old times, and then you find out the game doesn't even exist in any fashion at all. Now, if you wanted to say that I'm being pessimistic, I'm being too harsh on this studio, you could argue that the Chinese room might be responsible for all of these walking simulators, but things have changed. The people who are actually working on Bloodlines 2 are not those same people who are responsible for you just sort of walking around, learning about story, not engaging in a whole lot of meaningful gameplay. They've brought in brand new people to work on Bloodlines 2, and we're going to look at that now. I'm going to give this a fair shake, so that if you want to be positive, this would be the road that you go down. You look at these new people that are actually directing the sequel. If we look at Alex Skidmore here, he's the studio design director at the Chinese Room, and, and I will say that the Chinese Room, it's not actually a Chinese studio, it's based in the UK, I'm sure you knew that. The Chinese Room's actually based on a an experiment or something, but I thought I'd throw that pathetic joke in there. So let's carry on. So we can see that this person has been there for a bit over a year. That to me is a little bit concerning because, again, we're talking about that three years, three years of development potentially on Bloodlines. And people have said that they have taken work from the Hard Suit Labs team and they've changed things around. They're making sure it's cohesive and they're building an actual sort of experience, a full game out of it. But I'd still question that. Paradox would not have thrown in the towel all that money if there was anything sort of deeply meaningful there, I wouldn't think. So whatever they've recycled, uh, we'll have to see if that actually makes any sort of difference to this development lead time. Three years, most games take much longer. So we'll see, especially with how complex it should be. Now, this person has seemingly also worked on Still Wakes the Deep, it looks like it's called. I'd probably have to zoom in to see that exactly. But I saw the trailer, and that looked okay. It looked like yet another kind of walking simulator. But I don't hate all of those games. There are good sort of horror games out there that have that vibe. I just don't know if it all translates directly over to Bloodlines. In his other history, Transformers, I, I don't even know about this game, but I do know Gear Ta Gears Tactics. It's a spin-off. It was actually quite PC-focused. I haven't had a chance to play it, but it, it was interesting to me that Microsoft were at least trying to, to build a PC title, given they screwed over their PC audience for a long time. They were obviously focused on the Xbox, and I remember there was a bit of an uproar when this was announced, the fact that it was for PC and only got imported to the Xbox later on. So it's good to see that at least the director has that experience with combat, and maybe some of that will translate over. I'm not sure, but at least it's strategic combat, and maybe that'll play a part, because most of the feedback I'm seeing, I agree with this feedback, is that the combat showed off in the Bloodlines 2 trailers. It does not look good. It, it looks really rough. From what I've seen, I'm not even sure if there's actual mechanics there or if some art people have just put that together. Is it genuinely gameplay? They'll probably say it is, but it looked really mixed. And I mean, if that's the art, the, the art is something that studios can genuinely get right. It's not that complicated. You can get competent artists to, to make it look good. But how does it play? It doesn't look good. It probably doesn't play very well. So this director, he was actually at Lionhead, the studio responsible for, for Fable all of those years ago. But it seems like he was only really in a leadership position when they were working on, 
I think it was Fable Legacy or something. It was some sort of multiplayer title. No one seemed to like it. That series kept going downhill. Fable 1, interesting. 2, uh, was sort of on the decline. 3, uh, and then this Fable Legends, Legacy, whatever it is. No one liked it, including Microsoft, which is why the studio was closed and they were gone. So that probably doesn't fill me with a heap of confidence that this guy gets in a leadership role, the studio shuts down. A couple of things since then, suddenly developing Bloodlines 2, which certainly has... A, I don't think it has the expectation that it once did, but people are still going to be waiting with bated breath, wanting to see how it ends up. Is it going to at least be competent? I don't really know. I mean, Paradox clearly just looked at the dollar signs here. I don't think they looked at Sumo Digital and the Chinese room because of their development pedigree. I don't think there's any personnel within these teams that suggests this is the team to do it, to get Bloodlines right. I really do think that rumour that Sumo Digital pitched Bloodlines as a, as a nice quick game to get out the door, a, a nice realistic budget... Paradox, you're no longer going to be throwing your money away because we're going to get this out. You're going to honour those pre-orders. That really seems like all it is. Maybe the game's okay. But if you look at Sumo Digital's catalogue, there is a bit of a trend there. They haven't really developed something by themselves, at least, that you would say is absolutely incredible. They were responsible for titles like Crackdown 3 that you probably can't remember. That being said, on the flip side, they were responsible for co-developing Hogwarts Legacy that people seem to like. So there's a better 50-50 there. I won't totally shit all over it. However, it doesn't look super good. So we'll have to see what happens. I really hope that they really stick to, stick to sort of a small scale. I don't want them to go crazy. I don't want a beyond good and evil 2 situation where you get the first game that's pretty small in scope. And I think that game benefited from that small scope. The developers were able to really focus on that title's strengths. And I really think it should be the same with the Chinese room. They shouldn't try and make Bloodlines 2 a 60-hour experience. Because if they try and do it, you just know that at least 80% of it is going to be rubbish. It's going to be rushed. It's going to feel like a total mess. I hope that they're really looking at the scale and they're looking at maybe three, maybe even two really high quality hub areas and perhaps making it a 15 or 20 hour experience. The only way that this series actually carries forward is if this isn't a complete flop. The first game, it's amazing. Patches, modders have made it excellent. It's a good experience for the most part. However, it still had a very troubled development. It was, it was sort of rushed out the door. The studio was closed straight afterwards. They couldn't even work on it and get it up to scratch themselves. And then you've got the sequel where there's all that turmoil. The original creator's screwed over. It eventually comes out, but the, the final game is rushed despite eight years or so of dev time because of all that's happened. And most gamers won't know that. Your average RPG enjoyer who is not looking into this stuff, they're not going online, looking at, at how this game has been made. They just see a cool vampire game. Maybe nostalgia plays a part. They heard about the original years and years ago. They maybe played it, but they're certainly not looking right into it. And all they're going to see is a game that might be rushed if it's coming out so quickly after changing developers. So if Chinese Room are going to stick the landing, it's got to be smaller in scope. I want to see good characters. I don't need to see heaps. I just need to see a handful of good characters. Good quests. Make those hubs enjoyable to explore. Make sure there's some missions outside the hubs that are great, like the original had. There's some incredible experiences in there. Again, we don't need to see big combat romps. I don't want to see that. I want the gameplay to be serviceable, but it's okay if it's not the absolute main draw. What we saw in the trailer is not great. So I don't think they're going to get it absolutely excellent. It just needs to be serviceable. I think that's okay. But we'll see that happens. I'm sure there's going to be some more spanners in the works here. Bloodlines 2 has delivered on the drama front for way too long. There's no way it comes out without a hitch. There's going to be some more, I suppose, people falling on their face. And we'll have to see what happens. But thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.